this God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and over him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he cut the wood of the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On that day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his head the fire and the knife, so they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the land for a burnt offering? Abraham said, Go will provide for himself the land for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. And God, we honor your name because of your word. We ask you speak to us in a new way this fine morning. Reveal your mysteries to your people. And Lord, may your word transform the lives of your people. And Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit of God, may you use me as a vessel of honor to pass thy message. Anoint me with the anointing of the Holy Spirit that may not depend on my flesh, but may fully rely on your Holy Spirit. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. And last Saturday we said, the power the two God have placed in our heads to access his presence is praise and worship. And so we started in the series, His Presence Gates, and we talked about the power of praise and worship. And today we want to talk about sacrifice. Somebody say a sacrifice. Somebody shout a sacrifice. And you see, when Christ was crucified on the cross, he ushered us into a priesthood, a royal priesthood. And when Jesus offered a sacrifice on the cross, he ushered us into royal priesthood. And so, as believers, we are priests. And so, being priests, there are some things we must do. And I want to submit to us, worship me a sacrifice is ineffective. Worship cannot happen without sacrifice. Sacrifice is part and parcel of worship. If you say you are worshiping and there is no sacrifice you are offering, then your worship is null and void. And so God commands Abraham move from Beishaba and go to Moriah. I am Moriah. I want you to do one thing. I want you to offer your son as a sacrifice to me. And so we find Abraham telling his men who we are servants, tell him here, I want to go there to worship. I want to go to that place. You guys, you are not wanting to go with me. Just, just remain behind. I'm going to Moriah to worship. And what is the worship he wants to do there? To offer a sacrifice. Somebody say a sacrifice. Our dominion as kings arises from our worship as priests. Our dominion as kings arises from our worship as priests. If you want to rise in your area, if you want to rise in your way of calling, then that dominion can only arise from your faithfulness to worship God as a priest. You will never dominate, you will never rule, you will never do anything in life effectively if you fail your role as a priest to worship. Somebody say worship. What are attributes of priesthood? If we are called to be placed, what are these attributes God expects from us? Number one is place. Somebody say place. We must be in a place where we are set apart. We must be in a place where we are set apart. Priests 
are not supposed to be in any other place. The, the, the position, the place God expects us to be in is a place of being set apart. Somebody say, set apart. If a priest is to offer a sacrifice and the sacrifice is to be accepted, then that priest must be set apart. The second attribute is that priest must be in a position. Which position? A holy position. Somebody say holy. holy. A priest is supposed to be in a position of holiness. It's supposed to stand in a holy ground. And that is when he can offer a sacrifice and it will be effective. The third attribute of a priesthood is that they are supposed to have a function. And what is the function? The function is to offer sacrifice. Somebody say, offer sacrifice. And you see, priests are not just there to be allowed and to be fair to their presence. No, 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 no. Their function, their ministry is to offer sacrifice. And I submit to us by the virtue of Christ offering himself as a sacrifice on the cross, he ushered us into royal priesthood. And so each believer is supposed to be a priest in one way or another. Not any other priesthood. Royal priesthood. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And there are some things that worship demands. There are some demands. There are some things worship demands. The, the, the sacrifice we are supposed to offer to the Lord are spiritual sacrifices, which is our worship and our praise. Those are the, 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 the sacrifices we are supposed to offer. In the time of Abraham, they used to offer goats. They used to offer bulls. And now we find God taking him to an extreme of offering his own son Isaac. In those times, they used to offer physical things, but in this royal priesthood, we are supposed to offer spiritual sacrifices. Somebody says spiritual sacrifices. And spiritual sacrifice, God is expecting from us is praise and worship. And what are the demands of worship? Number one, worship demands that we move to a new place. Somebody say a new place. It's a demand. It's non-negotiable. Worship demands we move to a new place. Belly Shelba was a place. But God required Abraham from, to move from Belly Shelba to Moriah. Because worship demands moving to a new place. And what is the new place God is expecting us? A place of total obedience. Somebody say total obedience. What would make somebody take a donkey, take a young man and some servants, and track 50 miles, almost 70 kilometers, from the amount place to a place God is telling them to go? What would take such a person move from Vika? All the way almost to, to Karatina or whatever some of the kilometers is. Well, what do you take somebody to track all these kilometers? Obedience. Somebody say obedience. Worship demands total obedience to the king. King Jesus. Worship demands that we fully move to a place of obedience. Somebody say obedience. Minus obedience. We are failing on one demand of worship. The second demand of worship is that we, we, God expects us to yield to his demands. Somebody say yield to the demands of God. You see, you don't worship God the way you want. You worship God the way you want to be worshipped. And that is the mistake we make. When we think God wants us to worship him the way we want. So, so we carry ourselves the way we want and, and we forget there are some demands from God. The second demand of worship. We must yield to the demands of God. And what are the demands of God? Abraham, take your son and sacrifice him. Those are demands. And God, for him to accept our worship, we must yield to his demands. We must stop yielding on our own demands. And we must now yield to the demands of God. Well, what is that when God is telling you, lay it aside? You must lay it aside. Because we don't worship God the way we want. We worship God the way we want to be worshipped. If he says, yield your son, give me your son. 
then you give him your son. If he says, lay aside this burden, it's heavily lending you. Lay it aside. If he says, when you are coming to me, come to me like this, that I say should be mine. And we must comply with the demands of God. No, 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 no. Uh, God, I have some bulls, fat bulls. I have some fat lambs. Why can't I come and offer them? I don't want to offer my son. No, 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 you don't worship me the way you want. You yield to the demands of God. Somebody say the demands of God. Before we go and offer sacrifices as priests or all priests, God expects us to be cleansed. Somebody say cleansing. Shout cleansing. He expects us to be cleansed by the word of God. Sanctify them with the truth. The truth is your word. He expects us to be sanctified, to be cleansed by the blood, the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. So the people who come to offer sacrifice must be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And he expects us to be cleansed by the Spirit of God. Somebody say the Spirit of God. Three agents of cleansing. The word of God. The blood of Jesus, the Spirit of God. All priests, when they have come to offer sacrifices, they, they must undergo cleansing through those agents. The blood of Jesus, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God. If you come to offer sacrifice without being cleansed, you, your sacrifice will be like that sacrifice of Cain. After Cain offered his sacrifice, God was not interested in it. And God is not interested in sacrifices. If we come to him, Kianeji, Kianeji, he won't ask before we come and offer sacrifice to be cursed by the blood. Born again Christians. To be cursed by the word. We do it according to the word. To be cursed by the spirit. We don't do it from the flesh. We do it in the spirit. And last time we said, authentic praise and worship must be done with the revelation. We bring the revelation, the spirit of God. So one of the most important things when we come to offer sacrifices before God is cleansing. Somebody say cleansing. And those who are coming here to lead praise and worship. And even us, because we said all of us are called to worship. God expected of us to be cleansed before we lead people in worship. One of the most important things in that so-called practice of praise and worship is spending time in the presence of God, spending time to pray and break in spiritual realm, spending time to be cleansed by the Spirit of God, spending time in prayers. That is very important. It means something the praise and worship must do when they meet to prepare. Then it must be being cleansed by the Spirit, breaking in the Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to take charge, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to regenerate their mind, to regenerate their spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to take over is very important because all priests, before they offer the sacrifice, must be cleansed. And when we are cleansed by these three agents, the result of that is pure conscience. Somebody say pure conscience. The book of Hebrews says approach him having been crushed by the, by the water. Ha approach the Lord with cleansing. Don't, don't, don't approach him just like that. We don't want to go to that. But, but there are people in the Bible who, who approached God just like that. And the Bible records what happened to them. Uh, and the blood expect all priests when they are approaching him to be having pure conscience. The, the result of being crushed by this rule is number one, pure conscience. Number two, we get clean hearts. Somebody say clean heads. Somebody shout clean heads. David asked in the book of Psalms, who is worthy to go up the mountain of God? Those with what? Those with what? Clean heads. Somebody say clean heads. Those worthy to go up the mountain of God is those with clean heads. Because we are going to offer sacrifice to the Lord. So when we are cursed, we have clean heads. And the Bible says, lift your holy head. When, when, when do those heads become holy? When we are cursed by the blood. 
by the word and by the spirit. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Cursing is important because it also brings a humble heart. When we are cursed, we get a humble heart. Somebody say a humble heart. The Bible says a contrite heart, God does not despise. So any contrite heart that comes before the Lord, any sacrifice you offer before him, he will not despise it because you have a contrite heart. Now the cursing by the Lord, the cursing by the Spirit, and the cursing by the blood creates in us a humble heart. And every priest must have a humble heart. But because God will never despise a humble and a contrite heart. The fourth thing the Christian blames is the revealance and the fear of God. Somebody say revealance. When we are Christ, we revere God. When we are Christ, even when we lift our heads before God, we don't do it like a concert. We do it with revelation. We do it trembling, fearing God and knowing He is mighty. He is awesome. Knowing He is the creator. Knowing we are living by His grace. Knowing we are living by His masses that endures forever. So when we are Christ, we revere God. And so when we come to offer sacrifice, we don't like offer sacrifice in jokes and, and common days. We offer sacrifice, revering God, knowing who He is. Because we are been cursed by the blood, by the word, and by the spirit of God. Somebody say violence. Yes. Somebody say violence. Yes. You notice Abraham does not argue with God in any way. He revered God. He is being asked, give your son. And he does not ask questions. He just says, let's go. Revealance, knowing who you are serving is very important. You, you live on that. You miss on that, then your sacrifice becomes futile. Then your sacrifice becomes a issue. Then your sacrifice becomes, I don't have time for late. Let the revealing people come and offer the sacrifice. Come on, say revealance. We as priests, we are to offer spiritual sacrifices. And when we offer spiritual sacrifices in this nation, do you know what? God accepts them. God hears us. God responds. God inhabits the praises of his people. That is when those things are in place. When those things are not in place, it becomes a stage. It just becomes a place to do any other thing. And we do it minus the presence of God. For the presence of God to inhabit the praises of his people, the priest must be cursed. Somebody say cursed. Spiritual sacrifices. We have to offer spiritual sacrifices. The first sacrifice is on the physical realm. Somebody say physical realm. Things you can see with eyes. Things you can touch. The first sacrifice is on the physical realm. And this includes yourself. Somebody say myself. Bible says in the book of Romans 12 verse 1. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Your what? Your bodies. That the first physical sacrifice we have to offer is our bodies. Meaning, God is interested with how you come in there. God, God, the, the way you present yourself, the only God has not looked at that. He looks at it. And that's why we say, even the people come and hear, the way they look, it matters. Because the first sacrifice we are offering to the Lord is our own bodies. Somebody say, my body. It is physical, it's tangible, it's not negligible. It is something God takes seriously. And ourselves are the first physical sacrifices we offer. If you be a priest, what will you do with your body the rest of the year, the rest of the week matters. Because the first physical sacrifice you are offering to God is your physical self. The second physical thing is your time. Somebody say your time. The book of Colossians says, walk wise and walk with wisdom. Redeeming time. Somebody say redeeming time. Time is very important. According to God, time of your life, you have placed it on your head. You can either decide to offer it to him or, or you can decide to offer it to the enemy. And time is one of the physical sacrifices you can offer before God. Coming to the house of God is not a waste of time. 
coming to serve God for prayers, for fellowships, for right prayers. It's not a waste of time. It's a sacrifice. Somebody says it's a sacrifice. And God take it like you are offering your time to him. And he was perished with that. Somebody say substance. The book of Philippians 4.18, Paul writes and says, I am full, I'm well taken off, because I've received what you guys sent and for Ditas to bring to me. The things these people brought to Paul made him full and made him well. Substance. Somebody say substance. Our substances are part of the physical sacrifices we are to offer before God. And when you come in the house of God, we should not come empty-handed. Somebody say empty-handed. When we come before God, we should come with tithes and offerings. Because substance, physical things, is part of what God expects of us. Substance, the things we get, as physical as they are, they are part and parcel of the sacrifices we are to offer to his kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. And I know people don't want to be told that. But, but I want to submit to us. Every time we come before the Lord, come with substance. It is expected by God, it's a command, and for all priests, mark you, they never appeared before God to sacrifice and to have it. You see, it's only in this dispensation that grace is abundant. And so we have taken advantage of the grace and we have taken it for granted. In those times, no priest could insinuate he was going to offer sacrifice and to have it. All the priests had to carry something to offer to the Lord. Somebody say maturity. Mature priests understand that. You never go to the Lord and to have it. Your substance is part and parcel of what God expects of you. The other physical uh, real sacrifice is good works. Somebody say good works. The book of James says, now faith without what is what? Faith without, without what? Is what? You cannot be a priest and then there are no actions in your life. So, good works is part and parcel of the sacrifices we offer to the Lord. And, and every priest must be accompanied by good works. When you check your life, we must see good works. And we don't do these good works to impress people. We do this as unto the Lord. We do them as unto who? Unto the Lord. It's part of a sacrifice. In fact, the Jews believe that, that there is no line that separates spiritual things and physical things. They, 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 they believe that whether I'm doing spiritual or physical, all of them are as unto the Lord. If I am a doctor, I am nursing the sick. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing it in church or in hospital. It's good works unto the Lord. If I am a teacher and I'm teaching children, it doesn't matter whether it's in school or in Sabbath school. It is good work and I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Good works is part and parcel of every priest. Somebody say good works. So, so don't complain so much when you are doing good things and there are no appreciations. You should know one thing. Those things that are, they are rising before God are sweet smelling aroma. And because of that, God will surely bless you. The physical realm. Then the, the, the other sacrifices we offer, they are on the soul realm. Somebody say soul. Somebody say soul. Soul is where our emotions are. And the first sacrifice we offer in that realm is joy. Somebody say joy. What is joy? Joy is when we put our confidence in God. Joy is when we don't look on our circumstances, but we put our trust in God and we know on his heart we are safe and everything is taken care of. Now, when you come before God, he expects you to come with sacrifices of joy. Somebody say sacrifices of joy. You see, if a priest come before God gloomy, he is doing now and void work. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. An inner priest 
priests are mature. Any priest who comes to offer before God, he expects him to have a sacrifice of joy. A sacrifice of joy. Somebody say a sacrifice of joy. When we live a life of joy, when great things happen, when sad things happen, when challenges come, yet the joy of the Lord remains your strength. That is a sacrifice. And God is pleased with that. Somebody say that's giving. That thanksgiving is another sacrifice God expects of us. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And thanksgiving is very important. What is the opposite of thanksgiving? What is the opposite of thanksgiving? Somebody say complaining. Somebody say complaining. You know there are priests who come before God and they offer complaints. They come before God and all they do is to complain. So they are offering sacrifices of complaint. And God is not interested in that. God is interested in sacrifices of thanksgiving. If you are offering sacrifice, let them be sacrifice of thanksgiving. And what is thanksgiving all about? It is appreciating. Things that have happened, it is because God has allowed them to happen. And if God has allowed them to happen, then it is working for my good. So I give you thanks. Somebody say, I give you thanks. What is complaining? Things that have happened is because God, you are asleep. Why me, God? Why did you allow it? Complains. So God, you are not in control. That's why things are happening. And God says, me, I'm not offered sacrifices of complaints. When you shall learn to offer to me sacrifice of dance given, then come back. God expects us to offer sacrifices of dance given. Somebody say dance given. And the last soul, Liam, sacrifice is praise. Somebody say praise. I don't want to go into detail because last time we talked about praise. But the book of Jeremiah says they came from the house of Judah offering sacrifice of praise. Could the praises we make before God, they can be sacrifices. The praises we rise before God, they can be sacrifices. And in the praise, and the praise we rise before God, it's a sacrifice. It's a spiritual sacrifice. Somebody say praises. So what should be the atmosphere in the house of God? Atmosphere of joy, atmosphere of thanksgiving, atmosphere of praise. And any other atmosphere being introduced is not being introduced by God. The atmosphere God introduces is an atmosphere of joy, an atmosphere of thanksgiving, and an atmosphere of praise. Church, don't allow any other atmosphere to be introduced. Any other atmosphere is not from God. In the house of God, what is the atmosphere? Joy, thanksgiving, praise. Those are the sacrifices we make at the soul level. The, the, then the heart of it all, the spiritual level. Somebody says spiritual level. You see, the center of worship is spirit. A time is coming, and it has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. So the center, the epicenter of worship is the spirit. Is the what? And what sacrifice do we offer at that level? A contrite heart. Somebody say a contrite heart. Somebody show a contrite heart. A contrite heart is, is the, 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 the worship sacrifice we offer at spiritual level. And a contrite heart, the Lord despises not. The Lord does not ignore. The Lord must respond. And what is a contrite heart? It's a heart that is lighter relating with God. Somebody say lighter relating with God. A, a contrite heart is not a depressed heart. At times we mistake the two. A depressed heart and a contrite heart. At times we think a depressed heart is a contrite heart, which is not true. Depression. Depression is simply being gloomy and down. And sometimes we come gloomy and down and want people to see we are contrite. We are worshipping. We are humble before God. A depressed heart is not a contrite heart. 
A contrite heart is a heart that is rightly related with God. And all priests, that is a sacrifice they must offer before God. A contrite what? Heart. Somebody say a contrite heart. And God responds. Oh, God inhabits. God moves. God manifests when we offer these sacrifices. Somebody say a contrite heart. This place they used to offer sacrifices in the tabernacle. They, they used to have a tabernacle which had an outer court. Outer court is where by any other person could sit. Any other person could they could sit. Which had a holy place. And some priest could enter there, the holy place. And it had the holy of holies. And the high priest was the only one allowed to get there. Was in Arimia. And he used to get there with a rope tied on his head. Papala Adventure, he go and offer his own sacrifices inside there. And the Lord strikes him dead. Then they could pull him out, the holy of holies. The tabernacle had three courts the altar, the holy priest, and the holy of holies. And so we must know where we are worshiping from. We must know, are we doing it from the outer court? Are we doing it from the holy court? Are we doing it from the holy of holies? And, and, and you are, yourself, as a body, you have the body, you have the soul, you have the spirit. The, the, the body is always comfortable in the outer court. And in the outer court, the body is comfortable and the person is always world conscious. The things allow the world is what he's conscious about. And the best he can offer to that court is thanksgiving. I, he has given me a new car. He has given me a good wife. He has given me a good family. The, the best you can do in the outer court is thanksgiving. The things God has done for you because you are just there to receive from God. You are just there to use God to do your own things. So the best you can do in the outer court is thanksgiving. And there the body is there. In the holy court, the, 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 the soul comes in. The soul comes in. And so you can raise praise before God. And you are self-conscious. And so you can raise praise before God. You have seen the things God has planned for you. You have seen the goodness of the Lord. And so you can raise praise before God. Yet you are in the holy court. The holy of holies. The, the holy of holies is where your spirit is. Where your spirit is, if it enters the Holy of Holies, the center of worship is the spirit. Without spirit, you cannot worship God. In the Holy of Holies, you are conscious of God. You can commune with God. And in the Holy of Holies, your spirit is deep there. You can commune with God. And in the Holy of Holies is where worship breaks. It's where you bow before Him. Despite the landlord who locked your house. It's where you bow before him. Despite friends who called you names. It's where you bow before him. Despite last night you never ate anything. Because you are in spirit. You are in holy of holies. That is where God is calling us to go. In the holy of holies. He is calling us to move from the outer court. He is calling us to move from the holy place. And he is calling us to move to the holy of holies. Somebody say holy of holies. And in the Holy of Holies, we commune with God. Makazaya Masha. Somebody be on your feet and tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, you offer yourself as a sacrifice. Tell the Lord, he is worthy. Just lift up your holy hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Just lift up your holy heart and tell him, thank you for making you a priest. Tell him, thank you for making you not only a priest, but a royal priesthood. Tell him, thank you. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for anointing you, for marking you as one of his priests. And you do this fine afternoon, offer him a sacrifice of worship. Would you this fine afternoon tell him he is worthy? Would you tell him he is holy? Oh, tell the Lord, make me over again. Tell the Lord, touch me again. Tell, tell the Lord, 
transform me, change me to be the priest you have in mind concerning me. Tell the Lord, cleanse me, sanctify me, set me apart for your noble use. Set me apart for offering sacrifices in your presence. Tell the Lord, set me apart. My we give you glory, Father. We worship your name. We lift your name on high. Thank you because you have made us who we are. We worship you, Jesus. It's all about you, Christ Jesus. We lift your name on high. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We honor your name. Hosanna. 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 Blessed dream.